Hello, I'm Emily. Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we have a $200 million funding round, a controversial resignation, the return of Google Glass, and more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke with Richard Gould from EY about exit strategy. Indoor farming startup Plenty raised a whopping $200 million investment round led by SoftBank Vision Fund. The funds will help Plenty roll out its vertical indoor farms globally. The farms can reportedly produce crops at yields 530 times greater than that of a typical field. July was also the month Dave McClure resigned as general partner of 500 startups. The news followed the publication of a New York Times report claiming he had sent inappropriate messages to a female entrepreneur. Vantiv is to buy UK payment processing firm WorldPay for £3.85 per share, which works out at around £7.7 .7 billion. The exact pricing will depend on Vantiv's share price when the deal closes. Assuming the deal does go through, the company will be run by two CEOs and be co-headquartered between London and Ohio. Uber has formed a partnership with Yandex, the Russian search giant and operator of the ride-hailing service Yandex.Taxi. The companies will combine their taxi services in Russia and several other Eastern European countries under a new, yet-to-be-named company. Meanwhile, Google Glass is back. The tech behemoth's smart glasses weren't well received at all when they went on sale in 2014. But the firm has released a new version nonetheless. This time, they've released Glass Enterprise Edition, a version aimed not at consumers, but at workers. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. We spoke with Richard Gould from EY about exit strategy. Hi Rich, thanks for joining us. So we're going to speak about exit strategy today. So first of all, can you tell us what the different types of exits are? So most people think of an exit as a private sale, sale to a strategic buyer, but there are IPOs and we're beginning to see some IPOs coming back into the market again. But also increasingly we're seeing partial exits because growth stage investors come in and can buy part of an entrepreneur's stake. Should exit be the ultimate goal for all tech founders? Well, it's certainly true that some entrepreneurs build their companies to sell them, but not all of them. I think many entrepreneurs just want to build a company that's going to change the world and do something really exciting. In fact, most of the biggest exits are in that second category. And at what point should founders plan for an exit? So I think in many ways planning starts from day one. You need to have your house in good order and you need to have the systems and governance in place so that if an acquisition were to happen that a buyer wouldn't find problems. And really relationships are fundamental because many companies get sold to a company they've had a relationship with for a very long time. So building strategic relationships early is key for every entrepreneur. So once a firm feels like it's at the stage where it wants to exit and it's going through the process, how do they then decide on the best buyer? Well, some of it is just around money, but a lot of it's around culture as well. Your investors, your advisors are going to have a view, but ultimately an entrepreneur typically wants to have their company, their baby, be successful in someone else's hands. So finding some form of meeting of minds around the cultures is really important. And how can a company know when it's the right time for them to exit? Well, I think there's a lot of touch and feel around that, and again, some of that will go to what your investors think, but taking a lot of advice, taking advice from your advisory board or the broader professional services community is important. I think much of it's driven around what the buyers want though, and the buyer's timing. And to get the best value, what you really want to do is get your startup just at the front of an innovation cycle, because typically in a new area, the best values are always going to be paid for early acquisitions in any new technology area. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Great to see you. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.